so now let's go into another type of uh, ordering and that is by random and you might think why would this even be necessary why would I want randomly ordered contacts uh, that would be confusing and you're right that's probably this is a this would probably be a horrible way to do it um, uh, or have a contact list sorted but I'll give you an example of how I've used it um, I have I have a website uh, in, in my hometown that uh, called FortWayMusic.com, where we're, we're kind of the uh, hub for music in, in my city. And on the right sidebar, um, I have a bunch of links to relative content, and we have a database of local musicians and their music. Um, now we've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs in there uh, in our database now um, and we want to display or feature some of those songs uh, on the sidebar but we can't feature them all without the uh, page being a mile long um, and really defeating the purpose um, no one's gonna filter through all those results or, or scan through them to find something they like uh, so what we decided to do instead is we just pull a select amount of results. We only pull five, say, and we sort them randomly. So anytime somebody loads the page, there will be a different set of five songs. Um, in this way, every artist gets to be uh, featured at some point. We don't have to manually do it. And that's how we were doing it in the beginning before we were as familiar with this uh, database and dynamic development was we were going in and changing the artists either either once a week or several times a day so that people could see uh, different artists and that's not a very efficient way to do this one way I, I thought of as I was explaining that um, that this could be helpful in this situation um, if we don't look at this as much as a contact list on a phone as we kind of built this example off of since the beginning of the tutorials um, we just kind of think of it as a contact list in general um, you know your database of your clients and friends and say you have a website uh, and every day you want to randomly pick somebody to win an, um, you know some sort of prize um, what you could do is you could have this page randomly pick somebody um, each day by utilizing the random um, sorting option um, but uh, on top of that we're gonna learn another command and that is the limit command so that we can limit the results to just simply one so um, I'll quit jabbering on here and let's get back to our SQL so where we have order by we uh, we're going to add to it and we're going to put random sorry random in all caps and it's actually just R A N D and then uh, two parentheses and these uh, this is considered a function um, in MySQL and if you're not familiar with functions we'll talk about that later if you are familiar with functions, it's similar to functions in PHP and other coding languages where um, parameters would come in here. Um, and we're going to skip the parameters and we're just going to do a straight random. Um, but we're also going to add another command and we're going to say limit. And then we're going to tell uh, MySQL how many records to return. So limit one. And assuming this all goes right, when I click go, we're going to get one result back, and it's going to be completely random based on whatever mathematics uh, MySQL is running here. So we say go, and there you go. Here's our random winner for the day. And let's say, you know, tomorrow comes along, we want to pick another winner. Uh, winner. We can just run this query again. And look, I won. It returned uh, another random uh, user. Um, we can add uh, options to this uh, limit command. Um, we can we can choose where it's going to start the results from. 
um, this is probably not as effective with random so let's take out random and we'll say order by um, first name or let's say order by um, contact ID so in essence it'll, it'll be sorted in the order that we we put the uh, records in and we'll say ascending so it'll start at one and go you know continue up from there um, and we're gonna say limit for results but we want to start at the fifth result so if all goes well it's going to run this query and it's going to start at the fifth ID number because we have everything sorted by ID so the fifth row in our result and then send back four so what we should see is records five six seven and eight so let's run our query and there you have it um, although I did this backwards um, four is where we start at five is the amount um, that we return so I apologize for that all right let's close our uh, SQL window here and we'll just go click on browse to get our um, standard view here of contacts sorted default by the ID we're gonna add a, another field to our contacts database and let's go ahead and click on structure and we're gonna add one field after type ID and say go and this field is going to be uh, the date that the contact was added. So we'll call it contact underscore date. And this time we're going to introduce a new type, and that is date. What it's going to, by default, want uh, is the the format is going to need to be specific when somebody enters in a date. We can leave length and values empty for this. Go ahead and save. All right, and we go to browse and by default it's going to need to have this formatting in here the year uh, month day so it automatically spit out zeros um, because if that isn't in there it's going to return an error I'm going to pause the video really quick and I'm going to toss in some some dates in here okay now you see I have uh, added a bunch of uh, just random dates in here let's come back to our SQL window what we're going to do is we're going to do some date formatting uh, in in our uh, query and what we're going to do is we're going to say select contact first and what we want to do is we want to just return the first name of the contact along with the day of the week that the contact was added we're going to utilize the day name function And the parameter is going to be the field name of our date. So contact date. Um, this won't send anything back correctly. We need to assign an alias to this new um, result here. And just to be clear, day name is going to be the actual name of the week, or the name of the day, not the number. Um, so we're going to say as for alias and just give it a name um, for day added as I said the contact date uh, was referring to the day uh, the date that the uh, contact was added to our, our list so again really quick recap what this is going to do is it's going to select the first name of the uh, contact and it's going to run the day name function on our our date field, our contact date field, and retrieve the day name, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, as day added. So the result will have two columns, the contact first and day added. So let's run this. And there you go. We have each one of our contacts and the day of the week that they were added. All right, now let's uh, we're going to change that query up a little bit here. So let's go ahead and edit, and it's going to bring up our 
SQL window. And we're going to use a function called date format. And this function's got um, a ton of uh, specifiers. Um, and uh, so what we're going to do is similar to this here, we're going to say select contact first and run the date format function. And this function takes two parameters. It wants to see the date and then the format we want the date to be displayed in. And so the first parameter is going to be our date field. And then for our format, we're going to encase that in um, single quotes here. And we need to use um, specifiers, which are little, uh, I guess, codes, if you will, that uh, MySQL knows to represent certain parts of the date. So first we're going to do the month name and percent month or percent capital M is how we represent the uh, the month name and then we're going to do the day of the month which is percent D and then we're going to do the year and we want to do the uh, four digit version of it which is the percent uh, capital Y um, however in good form we're going to put a comma here so what this is going to return is the um, in the day added or actually let's change the alias really quick to date added and it's going to return this string that's going to generate with the um, uh, month name the day of the month comma year so it's going to return it in the normal format that you would uh, you would see these this combination here um, and to be clear, this uh, this field here needs to be a date. If it's not in the correct format with the the year, the four digit year dash two digit month dash two digit name, uh, it's not going to know how to pull that information out of there, and you're going to get an error. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and run this. And there you have it. So we've gone ahead and formatted this. And what this can do is save a lot of time when pulling this information on a web page or something. Um, we can go ahead and spit out the date in a, in a format that's much more desirable than the uh, year-day, uh, month-day.